Okay, hi, so welcome to this video where we're going to discuss diffusion and a special case of diffusion which we call osmosis. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive straight in and give you the definition of diffusion. Okay, so diffusion, okay, is the spreading. Yeah, the spreading, that was just spelt badly. Here we go. Spreading out of particles. Okay, particles is a, obviously a general term. You could be talking about molecules, you could be talking about atoms, you could be talking about ions, whatever it's going to be, right? Of particles from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration. Okay, so that's the scientific definition, but what does that really mean? Basically, it means, and um, by the way, as a side note, this only happens in fluids, okay? Happens in fluids and by fluids we mean liquids and gases liquids and or gases right so solids don't diffuse right but liquids and gases you will see diffusion occurring right so what are we talking about basically we're talking about if you have an area where you have a large amount of one kind of particle right uh, a simple example which which is an easy one to understand is let's say you spray some perfume or some aftershave in the air right instantly when you spray it if someone was standing on the other side of the room they would not smell it but you would right because you're right next to it however over time the person on the other side of the room might eventually might eventually smell it right it might smell good it might smell bad depends on which one you're going to wear but they're eventually going to smell it okay the reason for that is because of diffusion when you first spray the bottle, you have a high region, or you have, sorry, you have a region of highly concentrated particles, which are your perfume or aftershave. Okay. Now, bearing in mind that these things are either liquids or gases, depends on how good the spray is, right? But fluids. And so in the air, they're eventually going to start spreading out. And they're going to be spreading out from a region of high concentration to a region of lower concentration, right? On the other side of the room, you don't have any particles of perfume before you spray it. But so that's the lower concentration. But after a while, the particles spread out, which means that they kind of even themselves out throughout the room. Now, it's not that all the particles go from one side of the room to the other, right? Because then that actually hasn't spread them out at all. That's moved them. Right. So it's important to realize that this is also let's scroll this down. This is also random movement. OK, random movement of particles. The, and what we mean by that is the particles themselves are moving randomly. Let me show you with a diagram. Let's say that this these black dots are our perfume. Right. And once you sprayed them, they're all on one side of the room. Okay. Now, what does not happen is this. They don't all move from this region of high concentration to this region of low concentration because that doesn't make any sense. They haven't spread out. They've just moved. What does happen instead right, is some of them are going to move to different parts of the room. They randomly move. But the overall effect is that these particles have spread out. And so now, eventually, you do not have one region really like my diagram isn't going to be the best but you get the picture you don't really have one region now where there's a massive concentration of particles they've all spread out throughout the room and that is what we're talking about um, when we say diffusion now what's important in biology okay because perf you're not going to be talking about perfume too much in biology what is important in biology is that many 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 substances rely on diffusion to move okay so our cells obviously have around them a cell membrane. Now the cell membrane is what we call partially permeable, right? Let's write this down here. Okay, so our cell membrane is partially permeable. Right, what that means is it lets some things into it, right? Permeable means it allows things in, it permits things through, but partially means it only lets some things in. And this is based on size, okay? Let's say that this is our membrane, right? This is a completely 2D unrealistic diagram, but it gives you an idea, okay? And we have some small particles of, let's say, glucose. Let's say these red things are glucose, right? And this is outside the cell, okay? And on this right-hand side is inside the cell, right? 
and we might also have large starch particles okay they do not look like this in real life but this is just a demo okay now if we had these outside the cell and inside the cell we didn't what's going to happen is the particles are going to move via diffusion from the higher concentration spreading out to lower concentration right so some of them are going to move and you see that these my drawing actually worked fit nicely through these pores Okay, and so we have diffusion occurring. Okay, boom. Now our cell has glucose. We obviously are going to use that glucose for aerobic respiration and everything is great. What about the starch though? Can we just take the starch in like that? Boom. No, we can't because that is not going to fit through any of those holes, right? The starch is too big and that's what we mean by partially permeable, right? Only some things are allowed through, other things are not allowed through. Okay, what's important to note is it's not only the glucose moving from left to right. Some glucose randomly is going to move back out. Okay, that was, oh, I missed that. That is going to move back out, right? This one might move back in. This one might move back out. Okay, this is random. They just move around. Okay, but the net effect is that it's moved from the left-hand side where you had all of them to the right-hand side where you had none of them. Now they're spread out and that's what diffusion is. All right, let's get rid of these because they're annoying. Okay. So, what you also need to know are a few things which affect diffusion, okay? Because a few diffusion happens at varying rates, okay? So, <clears throat> rate of diffusion is affected by, first of all, temperature, okay? This is important because a higher temperature causes particles to move faster, Right? And if particles are moving faster, they're going to spread out faster, which means diffusion actually occurs quicker. Right, So higher temperature, higher temp, equals higher rate of diffusion. Okay, what else affects diffusion? The concentration gradient. Okay, concentration gradient. What do we mean by that? Right? Well, gradient means how steep something is. The concentration gradient basically is talking about the difference in concentration on one side to the other. Right? So if I were to quickly show you, let's go back to this scenario. Now, there's a large concentration gradient here because we have a lot of glucose on the left-hand side or outside the cell and no glucose at the moment on the right-hand side inside the cell. So the glucose is going to move fairly fastly, uh, fairly quickly. Sorry like that, okay? Reason being because it's just gonna spread out and then you have diffusion occurred, uh, or the overall net effect is that it's occurred quickly. What's important to note there is the particles themselves are not moving faster, right? What's happening is the overall net effect is achieved faster and that is diffusion, okay? But the particles themselves, to make them move faster, you need to give them more energy and, that what happen and that's what happens, sorry, with a higher temperature, but not with a different concentration gradient. But let me show you a scenario uh, where there's a smaller concentration gradient. Okay, something like this. So let's say here, we definitely still have a concentration gradient because you've got, look, six on the left-hand side and two on the right, okay? But if I were to move one, okay, like so, then they're almost the same, right? You've got five to three. One might go this way, okay? Then one might go this way. But overall, the net effect is you'll end up with something like that and they've spread out and you've got four on each side, right? But that takes longer just because there isn't so much of a concentration gradient there, okay? The net movement is still to the right-hand side, but the the difference is less drastic, okay? All right, and lastly, surface area. Surface area. And now for this, I'm gonna to have to change the diagram slightly. So this is our original scenario again. We've got a load of particles of glucose on the left-hand side and none on the right. Diffusion is going to occur. And notice we have well, look, one, two, three, four holes in this case, right? Um, which those particles can travel through. This is obviously a simplification. However, it demonstrates the point. You know, for, if, if I wanted to, four particles, right? Could actually move through at the same time, right? That's three. You could have moved another one at the same time through the hole that wasn't used, right? Um, well, that's just me messing up again. Okay, so you could have had four go through at the same time. Let's say, let's revert back to our original and we have eight over this side. But what if there was only a small surface area for those things to move through, 
like that. There's only one gap. Well, now four of them can't fit through that gap at one time, right? So maybe this one will go through and then it'll take longer for more of them to move, okay? And so surface area, a higher surface area indicates a uh, higher rate of diffusion, okay? So high surface area equals high rate of diffusion. Okay, and that is completely true. All right, so now we're going to move on to a special case of diffusion, which is known as osmosis. All right, now the reason I call it a special case of diffusion is because that's pretty much exactly what it is, right? Osmosis is basically diffusion of water molecules. Okay, if I were to relate that to the previous definition, I would say that osmosis is the movement of water molecules across a partially permeable membrane okay because the water is going to cross a membrane that's how it works permeable membrane from a region of higher water concentration to a region of lower water concentration okay now that is a bit of a mouthful and you may be thinking, well, water concentration, I've never heard of that before. And you'd be absolutely right, because we do not really talk about water concentration, but it is true. What we really talk about, and this is where students get very confused, is we talk about the concentration of a solution, right? Let's say, for example, uh, let's draw this as a diagram, actually. So here we go, very simple diagram. Let's say we had pure water in this beaker, and here we had a glucose solution. Ah, there we almost glucose solution okay so we had a glucose solution and pure water now on the left hand side the pure water that has the highest water concentration because it's got nothing else in it it's just pure water right whereas when you start to basically dilute the water right i don't want to use that word actually when you start to mix the water with other things then you start to get a lower water concentration right now the, the uh, confusion comes because we call this a concentrated solution. Okay. The reason we call it a concentrated solution is because when we're talking about something dissolved in water, the solution, or, or the word, sorry, concentrated versus dilute, is talking about what is in the water. It's not talking about the water itself. Right, so let's say this this one over here had a tiny bit of glucose in it. It was no longer pure water. Okay, I'm gonna cross that pure water out. Now this one would be a dilute solution. Okay, this is a dilute solution of glucose. This one is a concentrated solution of glucose. But the one on the left-hand side has a higher water concentration. The one on the right-hand side has a lower water concentration. Right? So what would happen if we put a membrane in between those two beakers? Okay? Pause the video and have a think about that one before I answer it. So if you've had a go, then well done. Shout it at your screen. Here we go. Let's say... Uh, and that was not what I planned. Let's say I somehow join these two beakers, right, like this. Boom. And pretend that that crossover is actually a partially permeable membrane, right? I'm going to draw that in green. Okay, this is a mess. I've never said I was an artist, but you know. This green here is a partially permeable membrane, right? Where is the water going to move? Okay, let's say that this membrane only allows water through. It doesn't allow glucose through. What's going to happen? Well, water is going to move in general, from the left to the right by osmosis, because that is moving from a higher concentration of water to a lower concentration of water. So what you literally see is the following, right? The water, the level of the one on the left actually goes down and the level of the one on the right actually goes up. Water has moved from the left-hand side to the right-hand side until their water concentrations are equal again. Okay, so now the water concentration of both is equal and that is what happens. Okay, I'll show you one more quick example, which is an experiment that you may have done or you may do in class. 
right? This here is a beaker of water, okay? Or it might be a beaker of some kind of sucrose or glucose solution, uh, and it contains a potato cylinder, right? Now let's pretend first that this here was pure water, right? And so this is pure water. Okay, the, the um, water concentration in pure water is very, very high, which means water will actually move from the water itself into the potato, right? So you're gonna actually see the potato cylinder expand because it fills up with water. Now, you may be thinking, well, where's the partially permeable membrane? The partially permeable membrane is the cell membranes of the potato cells. Okay, so they actually allow water in. And that potato will increase in size because water has moved into the potato via osmosis. Right? However, if this wasn't... Um, whoa. There we go. If this wasn't pure water, if it was instead a really concentrated solution of sucrose, right, let's just... I don't know, put a load of dots to say that that's all sucrose in there. You won't see these in real life, but, you know. Okay, so what's going to happen now? Well, the potato, okay, the potato cells actually contain water, right? All cells contain water. The majority of us as organisms is water, right? So our cells all contain water, and it's at a certain concentration. If this is a really concentrated sucrose concentration, then the water concentration is really low, Okay, and if that's true and the water concentration is really low, then water is actually going to move from the potato out, right, rather than the other way around. So what you're going to end up seeing is a potato cylinder will shrink and shrivel up. Okay, and the water has actually moved out into the solution by osmosis. Okay, and so that is the difference. All right, well, that was a lot of information, so I'm gonna stop there, okay? I do hope that that makes sense. If it doesn't, then feel free to post a comment in the box below or send me a direct email, okay? But please do like and subscribe as usual because it really does help me out. And also, it notifies you whenever new material comes online, all right? Well, I hope you enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.